Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna go through and show you my successes and a few failures with some uh, things I did from seed this year in uh, my landscape. This will be annual flowers, perennial flowers, and things in the vegetable garden. Uh, you know, each year you're going to have different levels of success. So some of the things I say in this video may not, <laughs> you know, maybe next year I would have had a different level of success with them. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to go through and show you some of the things that are just super easy to do from seed. I started all these things uh, inside uh, probably back in February. I'm always a little early uh, starting uh, from seed, even though I don't want to be. I, I, I should wait until March every year to pretty much seed anything. I'm always starting in February. Just everybody gets antsy in the wintertime, and that can stretch things out a little bit and start you out on kind of a bad path sometimes. But uh, most of, like I say, most of these things were seeded in February. Should have waited till March on a lot of them. That's okay. But I'm just going to bounce around and show you the uh, annual flowers, perennial flowers, and things in the vegetable gardens. Most of the seeds I got this year were from Johnny Seed. I buy from lots of different places, but this year I just happened to. Uh, uh, most of the things came from Johnny Seeds. I'll put the names uh, up on the uh, screen as we go around and take a look at things. The first thing I'll talk about is this ageratum right here, which won't show up quite as bluish purple as it actually is. This camera's terrible at, at this particular color, uh, but they are a little darker than what you're seeing here. The ageratum was, uh, as you can see, it's putting on a big, big show, definitely worth uh, doing from seed. And uh, it was a little slow to get started in the trays. And you know, actually for a little while, I didn't even think it was gonna germinate. So it's slow to germinate, but then quite vigorous in the ground. These are in part shade, so they're stretched a little bit more than they would. Uh, I'll cut them uh, each, you know, they'll, they're blooming pretty heavily right now, maybe in a week or two that when they slow down, I'll cut them in half. And uh, I've done that a couple times already. And uh, they put on a quite a big show. The next thing I'll show you is straw flowers. Uh, these are just super fun. And uh, they open and uh, have a papery kind of a, uh, uh, edge on them right here. The flowers are great for cut flowers. They last a long time. I put these in way too much shade and they are stretched like crazy because of it. I need to cut them in half and I will pretty soon. I'm going to cut you through here and show you some of the other uh, some of the other colors. These are not open right now. I recently cut uh, uh, the flowers off of these um, just to get some new ones forming but there's all different colors in here and they're, um, they're a lot of fun to uh, watch them open up. They it'll take a long, long time to uh, open up. They open up over several days or even a week or more. And uh, let's see, there's one, one or two more right here if I can get it to focus on those. Just super interesting. Uh, I, I would, the only thing I would say about growing straw flowers in the future is make sure they're in plenty of sun, otherwise they stretch like what you see here. I've had a few storms in the last few days that have knocked some things around, so you'll see some things flopped over a little bit, but it's because they were uh, so laden with flowers that the uh, wind knocked them over. These are Valkyrie asters, and man, are these spectacular. I'd never grown these before, and uh, wow, <laughs> that's all i got to say about these. Look at, these, uh, look at this white here. Uh, I thought I only had the pink and the uh, white, but uh, coming over this way, uh, there's an uh, almost purple one here that has started to, uh, to open up some flowers and the, the plant's a little less vigorous, but it'll catch up uh, pretty quickly. But these have been just a great surprise. And this is one right here standing upright like it should. Just the ones with the uh, heavy flowers on them fell over uh, the other night. So I have lots of Cosmos varieties uh, in the yard. I've recently cut them all back. They're all coming back to flower right now. So I don't have a whole lot uh, to show you right this minute, um, but I'll flip over to the another spot and show you a few other colors. So here's a pink one with a white edge. Uh, here's one that's a little bit, uh, has a little more white, the yellow center um, on all of them, and then a uh, much darker wine color Cosmos here. Cosmos are definite uh, no-brainer, and, and the nice thing about Cosmos is I've got some more seed, so right here in the middle of summer I'm actually going to start some more 
and I'll have these blooming right up until frost in the fall. This hibiscus is called Mahogany Splendor. I've got them in the containers in the front yard. I've got them here in the backyard. They're just absolutely spectacular. They will flower with kind of a wine color uh, flower, very large flower. Uh, it has, you know, I, I would imagine I'm close to having flowers on them at this point, don't really care. This plant is absolutely uh, spectacular. Super glad I did these. Easy from seed, they were vigorous from the day they, they germinated right up until now. And uh, I put three in a pot on the front and I'm um, regretting that one in any size container is enough. You can see how much, you know, how vigorous these are from seed right here at the uh, beginning of July. I did some lupins. I have not gotten any flowers on them. Uh, you can see the, uh, the plant looks uh, pretty good here. I think that uh, one issue I've had with these is I overwatered them early on. I think these would prefer to be raised up in a poorly draining soil like I have uh, in, in Raleigh, North Carolina in this clay soil. So I think next year I'll try the lupins again, but I will, uh, when I plant them, I'll raise them up or I'll just do them in a container. So I did these Scabiosa daisies uh, from seed and they're quite beautiful. Uh, this variety is called Black Beauty. I would not do this particular variety again. It just blends into the uh, backdrop and, and, and really seems kind of pointless uh, at times. They are beautiful and if you get up and study, uh, the, you know, study the flowers closely, I mean, they are just super, super interesting. But like I say, this variety, you can't really see it at all. The goldfinches have gone crazy for them. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that's gonna be true with other varieties, but uh, the uh, goldfinches absolutely love this thing. So I did several uh, delphiniums. Uh, there's uh, one right here that's, uh, and the rest of that one is opening up right there. Most of them have, uh, most of them have bloomed out already. So uh, uh, I don't have any more than this to show you. They've been okay. I think the same thing uh, as the lupins. I think that I need to raise delphiniums up a bit in this, uh, in this clay soil. They've been pretty easy from seed. Uh, of course, all parts of this plant are poisonous. And so some people uh, don't like to use them, uh, but they are quite, they, they are beautiful, the colorful. The foliage is interesting. The flowers are beautiful, of course. So I did lots of zinnias. Zinnias are easy from seed. Uh, just like the cosmos, I'm gonna do another round of planting uh, on these. I've got uh, pinks and oranges and reds, and they're always, you know, just a few blooming at the time. And then of course, uh, you know, butted up like crazy here uh, to bloom. Uh, like I say, I'll do a second round on these. When I went over to Denny Warner's house, he's got a, He's got a, a variety he does from seed called Bennery uh, that uh, I'm definitely going to use next year. They were just beautiful, large, big double flowers. One of the things I wouldn't do from seed again are these gypsophilia. Um, they're flowering and uh, they look good. They have very slow and uh, slow germination rate and uh, I've lost way more than uh, have ended up in the yard and they're not particularly that showy anyway. And I'm sure my uh, summer heat is, is, is not a friend uh, to these uh, gypsophilia. Same thing with the sweet Elysium here. Uh, I would just buy these from plants. If you're in the Southeast, I would just buy these as plants in the early spring and you can get flowers out of these until the summer. By doing them from seed, I didn't get them out until, uh, until you know, almost May. And then, uh, you know, the plants kind of went crazy and they were in bloom, but then uh, you know, it was over before it really got uh, really got going well. So in the future, if I do uh, Elysium like this, I will definitely uh, just just do them from uh, just do them from plants from the store uh, in in the early spring. These marigolds have been unreal. Uh, this is this variety is called Cocoa Gold. Uh, you can get some idea of how big these flowers actually are right there. Uh, just really fantastic. The bees uh, absolutely love them. They have a little harder time getting into these doubles uh, and, and getting the job done, but they don't seem to care. They work on them like crazy. I'll swing you around uh, over here and you can see I have lots and lots of them and they're so showy. I mean, just big, giant, big, giant flowers. I'll definitely do these again and I might look for some other giant marigolds to do next year as well. So I did Dusty Miller from seed and uh, the one thing I'll say about it is it has a very low germination rate very slow to start and uh, but the ones that have come through look great and are super super showy i would do these again from seed but i know i'd probably put uh, several seeds in each uh, cell for sure uh, just to cover for the fact that it has a low germination rate at least for me so this is a sclepius or um, milkweed uh, right here the one thing about milkweed is it uh, takes you know generally a year for it to bloom and so uh, 
Would I do them again from seed? I don't know. It, it's, they're slow to start from seed. Might just be better just to go and buy plants uh, for milkweed. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see with these as they continue to mature. It took a long, long time to get to this point, but these have, these have become more vigorous here in the last uh, few weeks. So uh, I'm curious as to how they, uh, how, how they move forward, but uh, you might wanna buy uh, milkweed from plants. So I did a couple of Celosia varieties uh, from seed and the plants are okay. Uh, it's taken a long time for them to get going. I might probably in the future just do Celosia as, as bedding plants and just buy them. Uh, I think I think it'll be easier, a little less headache, unless there's a super interesting variety that you want to grow. And then, you know, if you're in a seed catalog and you see one that's super, super interesting, uh, then do it that way. But again, I think next year I would just buy these from uh, from bedding plants. So I have a few sunflowers uh, up in the yard that are uh, open at this point. Uh, this one's called Pro Cut Gold that I got from uh, Johnny Seeds. And uh, they've been good. I, I tell you that I've got to protect my uh, seed uh, on the ground. I just did these from seed uh, in the ground and of course you know all kinds of critters want your sunflower seeds so next year I'll put some sort of protective barrier over them until they get some height on them so I don't have as many as I'd like to have but uh, this Pro Cut Gold variety is nice. It's definitely a dwarf. It's blooming about four feet tall or so. This Rebecca variety is called Sahara and they are just really really beautiful. Uh, I would definitely uh, recommend these Super, super easy from seed, uh, blooming like crazy uh, in the first season. Uh, see that? I think this was just a Zone Eight Hardy variety, but I think they'll be. They'll, I think they'll be fine here. I've got a uh, uh, another group of right over here, and you can see the different differences in the flower colors. This one's almost solid yellow, whereas you know all of these were in the same mix. But this is the Sahara mix. So I have several groups of uh, Lobelia that I did, uh, I did from seed, and uh, they look just amazing, really. And they're in pretty shady space back here. Of course, they'd take full sun as well, but uh, they're doing great uh, in this part shade condition and have covered the ground quite a bit. So the next thing I'll talk about is the coleus that I did from seed, and I have to say that I won't do coleus from seed again. It's uh, slow to germinate, slow to establish, uh, slow to grow and super inexpensive as a bedding plant to just buy them that way. I have ended up with, with quite a few and I'm sure by the end of summer they're gonna be uh, quite nice, but it has taken a long time just to get them to uh, this size. If I'd have bought them from bedding plants, they'd be gigantic plants uh, at this point. So I'll go through a few herbs that I did from seed. Uh, here's some Italian uh, basil right here. And uh, if I move over here, I've got several places where there's uh, dill, which I don't really, I, I have used it because I have so many uh, cucumbers that I do use this uh, uh, dill quite a bit, but I, I, as much as anything, grow them for the, uh, for the flowers. I'm gonna swing around here so you can see one of these other uh, uh, sunflowers that's up here. That's another one of those, uh, those uh, dwarf sunflowers. And uh, might as well show you this dahlia while I'm standing here, because I'm about to cover dahlias in uh, just a second. But there's the uh, dill. Uh, again, right here, uh, pretty easy to do from seed. Basil is always pretty easy to do from seed. The one thing I'll say about basil is you uh, don't want to use uh, old seed. Uh, you, you will lower. It's amazing how much less germination you get. Uh, I grew herbs for the farmer's market for years, and uh, fresh basil seed comes up, grows vigorously, finish plants very fast. Sometimes older seed will germinate at a very low rate and, and the plants are somehow less vigorous as well. Uh, okay, moving around here, I'll come back around to these uh, dahlias will be the last thing I'll show. There's some sage right here that I just did from seed. Uh, it's coming along uh, quite nicely. And then I've got some parsley, uh, some flat leaf parsley that I did from seed right here. Super easy, um, but any of those, the, par the parsley, the dill, sage, basil, and, and, and there's others too. Mint, mint is slow from seed, but um, not that hard. So I'm gonna finish up the flowers uh, with the dahlias here, and you can see how vigorous these plants are. I mean, these three, three feet tall, um, I could probably cut, you know, cut, cut this one in half at this point and get it to start reblooming again. These have been absolutely fantastic. I will say that the, uh, this mix that I bought from Johnny's showed almost all uh, doubles in the uh, photos and uh, uh, you know, they're pretty much all singles. I showed you that yellow one over there is more of a double, but these have just bloomed like crazy. I'm kind of in between flowers in a lot of cases, but you can see just flower buds everywhere. Uh, here's, here's one that's 
kind of open but small. And then if I move over here, uh, here's another one. And it is a, it's a beautiful mix. And I will say that these dahlias have been super, super easy from seed and super vigorous uh, in the ground and looking great right there. I'm gonna slide around and show you the single yellow. Of course, these some of these flowers are a little beat up uh, from some rain I've had, but they're absolutely loaded with uh, flower buds. So dahlias are a definite, um, definite from seed, um, quite vigorous. So I did all my uh, tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and uh, green beans and everything else in the uh, vegetable garden from seed this year as well. I'm gonna have that as a uh, separate video coming up and you can see uh, what has worked and what hasn't worked for me in the vegetable garden as well. Thanks for watching this video.